Right, back again with another episode of the GCN Tech Clinic, where I aim to help and solve your bicycle related problems. So if you've got one, leave it for me down there in the comment section below or on all forms of social media using the hashtag AskGCNTech. With no further ado, let's start this week then. First question is in from Dominic Shepherd, who says, They've got some SRAM ETAP on their bike and recently fitted oversized pulley wheels. Uh, fitted a new chain at the same time, but have noticed that it sounds a little bit noisy. Is that normal? Thanks, Dom. Dominic, nice to hear from you, and it's great to see that you're seeking marginal gains there with those oversized pulley wheels. Right, the first thing I must say is that most of them tend to be built actually from alloy, and I've fitted some alloy jockey wheels in the past, and yeah, they do tend to be slightly noisier. I'm not actually 100% sure why. I think probably because they're engaging and disengaging in such a short space of time, as opposed to a cassette sprocket, where it tends to be on there for a little bit longer. Um, but I'm not 100% sure the reason behind it, but all I can say is that it is perfectly normal with alloy jockey wheels just to have a little bit of extra noise there. Next up, we've got a question from Abdur Rahman, who simply says, SRAM hydraulic lever with Shimano caliper, dot or mineral oil. Uh, neither, the seals on those parts are only designed to be used with the fluid that comes in those braking systems from the respective brands. So I have heard of people out there actually having seals manufactured to be able to use different types of oil or fluid inside of braking systems. But the risk you're gonna run into there is actually not having enough braking fluid being pushed around the system so you can operate the brakes safely. So I wouldn't ever recommend doing it because after all your brakes, well they're pretty important Abdur, so stick with just one brand there. Next up we've got Clifford Romina who is always commenting on the videos. Nice to have a question from you buddy. Right, Clifford though asks, I'm currently using a quick link on my chain. The time is near to replace the old chain with a new one. The question is, can I use my current quick link on my next chain? Right Clifford, uh, I would replace it because generally you do get a new quick link in with a chain if you're buying something like a KMC or the newer Shimano ones. Uh, the reason I'd replace it is it is wearing out at the same time as the rest of your chain. So in order to get perfect shifting as well as a nice smooth pedaling action, you're gonna want to replace that too. Don't throw it away though Clifford, keep it somewhere in your toolbox or as an emergency spare. In fact, I always put them on my own key ring so I've got that with me as a well an emergency if I'm out on the bike ride and happen to snap a chain, which doesn't happen these days. Next up is Dinny Hilmi who says, what's your thoughts on the wheel cover that converts a normal wheel to a disc wheel? Right Dinny, they're decent for cutting down drag on your rear wheel because you're covering up all of the spokes with that quite stretchy fabric, if that's the ones you're talking about, that attach onto each spoke in turn. Now, Something really worth considering here is the actual time taken to fit one. So if you're gonna be adding and removing it a lot, just bear that in mind. Also, is it gonna be legal for competition in your area? So do check with your governing body. Uh, it's not gonna be as stiff as a normal disc wheel because obviously you're just adding something onto a traditional spoked wheel. And lastly, you're not gonna have that same momentum effect as you get with a traditional disc wheel. But for the money, well, they were always a really good option for someone to have. So if you're on a budget, it's certainly worth considering. Next up is Arash Fala, and Arash says that they're a fairly competent home mechanic and also true their own wheels. However, has never built a wheel. And considering that his rims are almost at the end of their life, does it make sense to just purchase a set of rims and relace the wheels? and learn, or is it better to just buy a complete wheel set? Bear in mind that the hubs are all right, but they're just a basic hub, nothing too special to write home about. Right, a really great question this, and well, personally, I would say that wheel building is a great skill to have. It's not done that much these days, really, by home mechanics, but it's still, well, just a nice thing to be able to say you can do. Something worth considering here, if you are going to be buying a new set of rims, you are also going to have to buy some new spokes too, because the spokes that are currently being used, they may well not be the right length, as well as the fact that they're going to be stressed and stretched also there too. So no wheel builder out there would ever recommend reusing spokes. Uh, now you've mentioned that the parts on there are all right, but they're not top of the pops. So it could well be just as beneficial or affordable to just buy a pair of pre-built wheels. But ultimately it all comes down to you yourself, how much you really want to learn how to build wheels. 
I learned to build wheels because I made a terrible mistake as a 14 year old child during an Easter holiday one year. I'm not gonna go into details on it, maybe one day I will reveal it, but uh, yeah, really it all depends on your budget and how much you really want to learn how to build those wheels. Edward Hammock is next, and Edward says they would like to get a power meter, but currently daunted by the price. Uh, Edward's bike has got Durace 9000, and he wants to know, would a Power Stages 105 left crank be compatible, as it's a lot cheaper than Durace? Uh, I figured a lower range power meter was better than none at all. Thanks, and keep up the good work. Edward, good to hear from you, my friend. Uh, right, so the latest uh, Shimano chain set, so your 9000 one, for instance, they all use Holotech 2 technology and a 24 millimeter axle. This is good news for you because you can fit any left-hand crank that uses that same standard on there and it's gonna work just okay. Well, in fact, better than okay, it's gonna work perfect. So this is actually an identical thing which I do on one of my own bikes, my own DeRosa. I've got a Durace 9000 right-hand crank and I've got a 105 crank on the left-hand side with the stages power meter in there. Now, yeah, it doesn't have the same finish and same looks and same Durace quality, but it does have the exact same power technology built into it. So it's absolutely fine to do, and it's great if you're on a budget. Right, final question this week comes in from Yuma Zwifter. Now, Yuma says they've got themselves a DI2 group set and loves it. Uh, now, it isn't a problem as of yet, but the indexing on the rear derailleur is close to the limit. Plus 14 out of 16. Is there any way to reset it where zero starts? Right, so let's clarify this everybody out there. The Durace Di2 rear derailleurs have got 32 micro adjust positions. So by that I mean you can go into the setting mode and then press the actual shift buttons and it can move 16 tiny little ways in one direction and 16 tiny little ways in the other. What I would suggest doing is going into that setup mode, put it into zero position, take it out of setup mode and then change gear into your highest gear, so that's one with the smallest number of teeth there, down by the rear derailleur, and then make sure that your rear derailleur is set up correctly, so that the adjustment screw, so your H limit screw, is turned in such a way that the upper pulley is directly beneath that smallest sprocket there. Then, try and go back through the gears. You may well have to micro adjust slightly, but you shouldn't have to go all the way up to 14 out of 16. Uh, something to consider here is if your rear derailleur hanger is not straight or if you've over tightened that skewer, quite often the rear derailleur hanger just bends inward slightly, meaning that all of your index settings kind of go out the window. So whenever you do index your gears, make sure that the rear wheel is tightened to the same tightness levels, I guess you could say, as it would be if you're going out there to ride. That way you're gonna get perfect gear shifts. Right, I hope I've been able to answer your problem this week in the GCN Tech Clinic. If not, don't worry, leave me your problem down there in the comment section below and I'll do my very best to answer it in a coming episode. Remember to like and share this video with your friends, give it a big old thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe too and click that little notification bell too. And now for two more great videos, how about clicking just down here and just down here.